He picked up. Hi, I said. It's me. Where the hell are you? He shouted back. Before I could answer, he went into harangue. First, for Christ's sake, the FBI has been all over my ass and the phone has been tapped. They're probably listening to this now. They open our mail. They watch the house. They follow us around like we're criminals and keep asking if we heard from me. What the hell have you done, Rob Ward Knox? They won't even tell us. They just keep saying it was awful, which has nearly killed your mother. So where the hell are you? A pizza parlor, I replied. Um, pretty much stunned after his monologue topped off my last two days. I've been hoping that if they caught Hamilton or not, I had gotten away without a trace, but I was wrong. They knew who I was and they were searching for me. And I knew I was in trouble. My father started back up. I got in touch with a lawyer in New York and he said, he said, that's where you're gonna go to court. He claims. You already spoke with him? Yeah, I know his brother from down here. Now, get with it, son. You are screwed up the wall. Call the lawyer and get some advice before they throw a net over you. It's been be it'll be better to turn yourself in, believe me. I've known enough criminals in my life. Okay, I said. Okay, we'll do it, he persisted. Besides, your mother's suffering over time. God only knows why she loves an ingrate like you, but she does. How are things going with the business? I asked, hoping to gain some relief with the change of subject. Jesus, he cursed. The island's sinking under the waves. Um, houses are broken into every night. People are being shot. The only good thing about having a screw up for a son is that the FBI is watching the house day and night so I can sleep like a baby. Now pay attention to your own business and call a lawyer. He gave me his name and number and I keep informed by day by day, he said before hanging up. I called Allie Newman. Yeah, I spoke with your father, he said, and I already called the district attorney and they want to meet with you. I set up an appointment for tomorrow afternoon to turn yourself in. Where are you? I told him. Get yourself up here pronto, he advised, in case... Um, in a case where there are a lot of guys involved, you don't want to be the last guy to turn yourself in. It's like that game, musical chairs, last one down's a loser. Do I have to turn myself in, I ask? No, he said in a deadpan voice. You can hide out until they catch you, and they will, and they'll be totally pissed off, and they'll throw the book at you, which according to the prosecuting attorney is 75 years. Do you know that you made the newspaper? Nice work. I grinned like an idiot. There I was, wanted by the FBI. I should have been pulling my hair out. Instead, I was basking in my criminal glory. I'll be up as soon as I can, I said. Tell, then I'll turn myself in. After I got off the phone, I went back to the motel and checked out. David was disappointed. You in trouble, she asked. I think so, I replied. Well, don't go on without a fight, she advised. That's what David always said. They may have been his last words, I thought. I caught a taxi to the main branch of the Fort Lauderdale Library. The taxi waited, and I ran the newspaper reading room and found the, news, the paper Newman mentioned. On the front page was a photograph of the beaver with the story. The picture was taken on 79th Street Marina. They had Hamilton sitting on some gear, squatting with a face hidden between his knees. I was a sad shot. I ripped the story out of the paper, folded it into my pocket, and ran back for a taxi. Fort Lauderdale, per, Fort Lauderdale Airport, I said. On the way, I read the article, and some facts were mixed up, but the important stuff was true. Two men had sailed a boat from Morocco to New York with 2,000 pounds of hashish. One man was captured and was still an unknown suspect. That was old news. The feds already had my name, and I caught a flight to New York, and once I landed, I caught a taxi to Chelsea Hotel. I was right back where I'd started, but it was the only place I knew, and since I was going to turn myself in, it didn't seem to seemed dangerous anymore. I had read enough crime novels to know that the real criminals run. Only an idiot would return to the scene of a crime. When I checked in, I asked the clerk for room 273, our old room, and it was available. I lugged my duffel bag up the stairs and unlocked the door. It looked pretty much just as I had left it. It was it, and it, I opened the dress, dresser drawer. Hamilton's stuff was still there, his t-shirt, underwear, shorts. I pulled them out, and beneath them were his boating knife and his hash pipe. Remarkable. I thought I opened another drawer. My books were where I'd left them, but the ship's log was missing. Had I taken it with me? Had I lost it somewhere? And I couldn't remember. I opened the closet. Hamilton's dim jacket was still on the hook. A pair of... Sorry. Um... A pair of scuffed up boots was on the floor and it looked like nobody even bothered to clean out the room. I wondered if Hamilton had hidden anything like money or hash and I lifted the mattress. There was nothing. I pulled out all the dressers. I lifted the false ceiling tiles in the bathroom. I checked the curtain hems, the chair upholstery, inside the phone, everywhere, but there was no hidden treasures. Just spooky evidence of I hadn't been there before. When I finally convinced myself there was no money hidden in the room, I took Hamilton's hash pipe, smoked a bowl, and fell asleep and I was exhausted. In the morning, I went shopping at a discount store and I bought a cheap navy suit. I picked out a matching shirt, blah, blah, blah. I looked like a 1950s kid. Allie Newman's office was on 21st Street, not far from the Chelsea Hotel, and I walked over. 
Come on in, he said, smiling and shook my hand. He was a tall, muscular fit and nothing like the Mad Magazine counterpart. He held the door and I passed by him. He smelled clean like the inside of a bar of soap and I thought maybe, just maybe, he could clean up after me. He directed me to the wood-paneled office and the wall lined with law books, school diplomas, blah, blah, blah. I spoke with the prosecuting attorney, Mr. Tepper. He said, we'll see you in a him in an hour, but first let me get you up to date. We're going to keep this an all-federal offense. No state involvement, which is good because if state prisons stink, always remember if you have to do time, you want to be in the federal pen, so plan your crimes accordingly. I didn't realize people gave criminal activities so much advanced thought. So I asked Mr. Tepper, he continued, what's the indictment look like? And he said that you had, you... They have you listed for 15 5 years charges. 12 of the charges are for conspiracy to distribute a controlled substance, one for conspiracy to smuggle, one to conspiracy to possess counterfeit currency, and one to charge of conspiracy to possess. Everything is a conspiracy, he said. What proof do they have? He won't say over the phone, Mr. Newman replied. We'll soon find out a plan of our defense based on the strengths and the weaknesses of their evidence. I'm planning to build a case around the idea that you were just hired to sail the boat and didn't know anything about the hash. Let's just start with that premise and see it that he shoot it down what he has to shoot it down okay i said i had no other choice but i figured it was unlikely premise would hold up we walked outside and caught a taxi to the foley square courthouse tepper's office was upstairs you gonna be okay newman asked i'm scared i said honestly we'll suck it up he advises his hardball after all after we all shook hands in tepper's office he smiled smugly and said this is the most airtight case that i've ever taken before judge all your charges are conspiracy based newman said you don't even have a case Ben, look at this, Tepper said, and he smiled a kind of checkmate smile and flipped open a manila folder that was about an inch thick with documents. First of all, you were the last one to come out of the woodwork, which means everyone in front of you snitched your ass out. We caught everyone you sold to, and every one of those dealers had named you as a person they bought from. And take a look at this. He flipped the page where Rick's mugshot was in Miami. He had gone there from St. Croix before going to New York. We busted this yo-yo for shipping 27 pounds of hash in a crate and turned him like a key. He unlocked the whole operation. He had you followed all the way from, we had you followed all the way from St. Croix. Here are aerial photos on the boat taken from the Coast Guard surveillance plane. Rick was the snitch and suddenly in another photo, there I was, the idiot waving to the turbo prop that passed us over a stand after the storm off Cape Hatteras. And look at this, he said, uncovering the photos by the Coast Guard launching Cape May. And this, he had photographs of the hash stashed in the boat in the Foscoll after the cabin. Then we have photos of you on the boat landing, loading hash in the shopping cart. Look at that smile on your face. Would you like to see a mirror? See how you look now? He said sarcastically. He was enjoying himself and I could feel myself becoming more and more numb as I was beaten down and here you are in a photo of you and Hamilton and Rick at Chelsea and let's see he shuffled their papers we have a photo of you delivering to buyers at drop points and finally here's a mug shot of Hamilton after we popped him poor Hamilton there he was with his angry eyes and his beard roughed up and all I could think of him was saying was there's always a snitch I thought he got away I said almost he replied he just chuckled get this he runs out the back door of the Chelsea Hotel down an alley somewhere we lose him and can't find him anywhere which is why we stopped paying attention to you for a bit so Hamilton hops in a cab but the traffic's all backed up because we started blocking the streets he gets out runs into a barbershop to get his beard cut off but the barber wouldn't do it and refuses so hamilton runs out to find another barbershop and we pop him ha i looked at newman he had a game face on i had no game face i had no game and i knew it newman knew it and tepper certainly knew it still newman said trying you don't have my client in the act give me a break tepper said this case is a lock i have a statement by everyone pop that gantos was part of the operation not to mention that Rick, who hired him, is set to testify. So what are you offering? Newman asked. Gantos here gives us the names of his St. Croix co contacts, and we'll tell the judge he cooperated. Newman gave me an expectant look. I didn't know anyone in St. Croix who sold dope. I never even bought anywhere I was there. Rick just gave me hash to keep me high until he dug up the stash. I don't know anyone who sells, I said. Well, he said, and then closed the folder. You think about it, because the only way that your value of us is who you can rat out. He glanced at his watch. It's nearly 6 p.m. and I need a drink, he announced, and I did too. At a little bar around the corner, Newman told me to buck up. Every dog has his day, he said. We'll let him have his, and I'll call you tomorrow and see if we can plead. Despite the fact that he's a real SOB, he does have a seamless case against you. That's for sure, I said. At the moment, I didn't feel so guilty as I felt stupid, really stupid. So stupid, I could hear Mr. Bacon's voice predicting I was going to fall flat on my ass, and I had, and I was angry, and I was angry that Rick had ratted us out right from the beginning. That night, I went out and I bought Chinese food and a collection of post stories. I was reaching for anything to escape into, even the pit and the pendulum. Newman called the next afternoon and woke me up. Okay, he announced, here's the real deal. We plead guilty to one charge of conspiracy to distribute, and they drop the rest. They want to make it simple. What do you think? You do it, he replied without hesitation. Besides, there's a good chance you'll just get five years probation. 
When do we plea? We can file a plea now and go for sentencing on the 22nd. What do you think is going to happen? I asked seriously. He paused. Don't sweat it, he replied. You're just a kid.